But first, helping children distinguish between false information and fact-baked news. It is a distinction increasingly a problem for adults. And to be clear, we're referring to false information disguised as a legitimate news story, not reporting that people dislike for political reasons and label fake news. In Washington state, educators and media literacy advocates have joined together with legislators to address the problem. Special correspondent Kavitha Cardoza with our partner Education Week traveled there recently. It's part of our weekly series, Making the Grade. This was the front page of the Seattle Post Intelligencer. Nia Vokonnell's third grade history class at Birchie School is analyzing old news stories looking for evidence of bias. People, if they don't know how to analyze it, will just say, oh, wow, that's true. Fred Cotton looks at the choice of words used in a story about Japanese internment camps during World War II. I was how they're wording it Japanese instead of Japanese Americans. What was the purpose of that? Why did the they do that? The purpose was to say, oh, we're not imprisoning American citizens. Well, as they put, we're not evacuating American citizens, we're evacuating Japanese. And why do they use the word evacuate? Another student also notices the language. I saw some fake advertising for the Japanese internment camps. They said they were assembly centers. So they kind of made it seem really yeah. cool, and actually it wasn't. Yeah. O'Connell uses examples from the past so these kids can become smarter about media messages in the present, even though they're only eight years old. I want to learn how to like analyze it myself and have my own opinion. They soak up everything around them. I think it's important for kids to be able to control the interpretations that they hear and see every day instead of the interpretations maybe controlling them. Recognizing bias in news stories is one form of media literacy. Spotting when the news is entirely fabricated, like these stories, is something else entirely. Often these stories are designed to look as if they come from legitimate news organizations and are meant to be easily shared on social media, resulting in confusion over what's real. During the recent election season, there have been reports of a concerted effort to spread fake news in a bid to influence public opinion. A recent Stanford University study of almost 8,000 students showed they were easily duped online. Researchers found overall, young people's ability to reason about the information on the internet can be summed up in one word, bleak. You've been working on media literacy for how long? About 40 years. Claire Beach is a media literacy advocate and former teacher. She says just because kids are comfortable with social media doesn't mean they're savvy about the information they're consuming. When they're using their phones, they, they may know how to make it, something work, but they don't have the ethical piece, the, the emotional intelligent piece. There's a wilderness out there for some kids. She's worked with lawmakers like Democratic State Senator Marco Leas to encourage media literacy in grades K through 12. I was reading a stunning statistic that just since 2003 to today, humanity has created more information than we created in all of human history up until 2003. So the pace of information, the pace of data, the pace of what our students are being exposed to is rising exponentially. How do you convince people that this is not about politics, this is about critical thinking? Both of the bills that I've passed have had bipartisan support. Whether you're Democrat or Republican, right or left, we want people to go into the voting booth educated and prepared to make the best decision uh, for our communities. And if people can't discern fake information from real information, that really corrodes the basic institutions of our democracy. The law in Washington state encourages educators to develop policies around media literacy and to share resources. It also allows districts access to federal technology funding. This new law in Washington is being used as a model by about a dozen other states. Advocates want to see media literacy taught in all 50 states. There's clearly growing momentum to pass that kind of legislation. Jim Steyer founded Common Sense, one of several organizations dedicated to media literacy. Here are five ways to spot fake news. 
They've also worked with Harvard University to create free lesson plans and online resources. The essence of media literacy is critical thinking. Every child in America needs those skills, particularly when they live in this 24-7 media and technology world where they're just bombarded by information, oftentimes that's inaccurate. These students are in Catherine Spark's English class at Edmonds Woodway High School. It's crazy how many people actually trust these sources. You can't distinguish the difference anymore. You can get like a thousand retweets. It's not even true. Sparks uses the play Hamlet to talk about fake news. It is about spying and lying and how that creates kind of a ripe environment for the proliferation of fake news. Sparks has created untrue stories based on the play. In Act 1, Scene 2, when he says, oh, but this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Sure, it could be a metaphor, but Hamlet has a shocking flesh-eating illness. <laughs> could you actually support that with evidence from the text? Good luck. Fake news is not news you don't agree with. Um, fake news is fabricated news. Sparks believes letting her students create their own fake news will teach them how to critically think through some of the information they receive. What words are used? Who benefits? Is there any truth to the story? It's got to be dramatic, like absurd things that you're like, what? This is a juicy story right here. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's like entirely fabricated. What would be the outcome of producing this story if the public saw this, or like, oh my gosh, there's so much drama and scandal going on. What's been the most painful about the proliferation of, of fake news in the media is to watch my students start to distrust everything. That's exactly why State Senator Mark Ulias says media literacy is so important. At its bedrock, when our founding fathers created this country, the reason why they were so committed uh, to public education was to make sure that we had an educated citizenry. Anything that starts with sheriff, you're outraged, that's a bad sign. And outrage is just the lifeblood of fake news. For the PBS NewsHour and Education Week, I'm Kavita Cardoza in Seattle, Washington.